Hey, welcome to Phoenix Kitchen. Today we're making homemade black forest ham using locally sourced pork. We're going to cure it, we're going to smoke it, and we're going to let it age for 21 days. Let's see how we did it. So we're going to start by gathering the ingredients that we need to cure this ham. We're going to use our mortar and pestle and use fresh ingredients from the garden where we can, including our rosemary and our majorum. Uh, we're going to be crushing our juniper berries uh, to really get a great rub. Some other things you're going to taste in this is going to be some black pepper, salt, uh, sugar, the maple sugar, and of course garlic, coriander, and nutmeg. We'll get this all measured out. The full recipe is in the description. Once we've got everything ready to go, we're going to grab a two to three pound ham piece that has not been cured. And we're going to get it all rubbed down and into the bag and talk about how this cure works. One thing that you'll notice, we are not using Instacure. We are using Morton's Tender Quick, which is a salt sugar blend for curing uh, rather than the nitrate cure. Because we are going to be doing this over a very long period of time. All right, with all of our curing rub measured out, we're going to go ahead and get everything mixed so that we can put it on the ham evenly. Just give it a nice stir in the bowl, looking to get all the different colors mixed together. Um, it's a beautiful, very, very fragrant rub with the rosemary, the majorum, and the juniper berries. So we're gonna take our ham and we're gonna pat this thing dry and make sure that we are good to go with it. Uh, the ham that I've selected here is a piece that is about three, three and a half pounds. And we're going to inspect this. We cut it uh, half of a ham and into a sort of roast. Uh, I did notice that there's one small bone shard and I'm gonna grab my boning knife and get that off because we're wanting to make a boneless ham here. You could do it either way. The bone's not gonna hurt it. You could cure the entire ham. If you do, just keep in mind this curing mix recipe is for about a two to three pound ham. So you'd wanna weigh your ham and increase the recipe accordingly. So once we get this all trimmed up, any loose pieces of fat uh, trimmed off that we don't want on there, then we're gonna just give this thing a very nice rub with our seasonings and we're going to put it into a bag because it's going to sit in our fridge for five days we're going to flip it each day because as this ham starts to cure juices are going to be pulled from the ham and we want to rotate that so that the ham is then marinating in the in its own juices right the dried brine will become a wet brine and we're gonna flip it back and forth so that the ham gets to do that evenly. All right, so once this thing is seasoned, like I said, we're gonna put it in a bag. You could vacuum seal it. If you've got a vacuum sealer, I don't. So I'm using a gallon Ziploc. You'll notice that I labeled on here that this is Black Forest Ham. And I also put the date that it's going into the bag uh, because I've got to remember, uh, you know, when that five day period is up. When you get to my age, sometimes that memory can be a little rough. So we're just gonna put it right on the bag. 
uh, we'll get this thing stuffed down in here, zipped up, and into the fridge. Now, since we're not using a vacuum sealer, I'm just using a Ziploc bag. I am going to go ahead and put this on a tray just in case some of our juices leak out so that I don't make a mess in our fridge. All right, so here it is in the fridge day one. We're going to let that set, and then we're going to come in each day and check it out. We'll open the fridge and just flip it over. That's all we've got to do. You can already see some of the juices starting to come out. So we're gonna flip that over and make sure that both sides get to marinate evenly in those juices. And a couple days later, we're still coming in flipping each day. You can see the tray was a good idea. We did have just a little bit that leaked out but that is not a big deal. There's still plenty in the bag. We're just gonna go ahead and flip it like we're supposed to and keep it going for five days. Once the five days is passed, we're going to take that ham out and rinse it extremely well. We wanna get every bit of that cure off. Once we've rinsed it, we're gonna pat it dry, put it back on a tray with a rack and set it back in the fridge for 24 hours. This will get the ham ready for the smoke. And speaking of smoking, a smokehouse would be wonderful, but since I don't have one, we're going to use our offset smoker. We're smoking on alder wood. I ordered it off of Amazon because if you went to the Black Forest in Germany, you're going to find alder and beech. Those are the common things to smoke a Black Forest ham with, not hickory and oak and the things we use here in the States. We're going to keep this just down as close to 100 degrees as I can so that we're trying to emulate that smokehouse. We get it on the grill. I left it on the rack so that it would stay nice and clean. Uh, I don't want anything off the grates interfering. So once this thing is finished, it took me five hours to get it up to an internal temperature of 145 degrees. So we are ready to go. I've let it cool down. We are going to wrap this in cloth. I'm using cheesecloth, um, but honestly, you could use you know any kind of old cotton cloth that you have. We're gonna rub this thing with lard all the way around. We're gonna smear it around. We're going to wrap it tightly in our nice cloth then we're going to go ahead and add string around this so that it can hang we've cured the ham we've smoked the ham at this point we could slice the ham right now and eat it and it would be delicious and it would taste you know similar to some deli meat that you might pick up um, it's got that flavor profile it'll be smoked it'll be good however we're going next level now we're gonna age this thing for 21 days. We're gonna move this out of the world of deli meat and into a more high-end charcuterie type meat. Uh, this is going to be an amazing amount of flavor. The aging process allows those flavors to really bloom and tighten and intensify. They become so much deeper. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to age it for 21 days. This thing's going to hang in my back room. Um, you need a low humidity area and obviously an area where nothing can get to it. Um, so, you know, if you were using a smokehouse to smoke it, that's great. Um, hanging it, if, if you're out in the country, you know, hanging in a barn, you might have problems with rats, mice. Uh, you know raccoons any animals that come around wanting to grab this uh, and pull it down so you got to make sure that you hang it somewhere that it'll be safe uh, I'm hanging it in a in one of my back rooms uh, I expect that room will start smelling delicious within a week or so so let's go ahead and get this thing all together rubbed down wrapped up and we're gonna use some twine to really bind it up and create a way to hang it
All right, we have gone 21 days with this ham hanging and aging. It is time to unwrap it and see what we've got. I'm gonna be just as surprised as you guys because this is the first time I've ever done this. We're gonna go ahead and cut these strings and get this thing unwrapped. Now, once we unwrap it, we do know that anytime you're making a ham and aging it or aging any kind of meat or cheese, you can have mold grow on the outside and that is perfectly normal but we don't want to eat it so what we'll do is once we unwrap this we are going to clean this with just some white vinegar and a clean cotton cloth we're gonna dip that cloth in and we're just gonna rub that outside with that vinegar to take off anything on the outside now what you're seeing there all that white that's leftover lard uh, that hasn't been absorbed we'll get that cleaned off also and we'll be ready to slice into this thing All right, we got it cleaned and rinsed. It looks good, it smells very good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get us a couple slices and see how this thing looks. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we were making this from locally sourced pork. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I can't find a ham at the supermarket that has not already been cured and flavored and smoked. Uh, so this is part of the deal when I bought uh, my first hog directly from a farm. Uh, if you saw the bacon video we made a few weeks back, I mentioned it was Middendorf Farms over in Gibson County uh, here in West Tennessee. Uh, this is one of the hams they got me without it being cured or smoked. You can see there, this is, um, they use a Duroc mix of hog and it has amazing marbling all through you can see the white veins of fat that run through that meat. I can tell you the flavor was extremely intense, very floral, very smoky. And the one thing that was truly amazing is it has this buttery, velvety feel to it. Um, think about prosciutto and the way that works and the way it melts and you feel that velvetness on your tongue. That's this. Imagine tasting black forest ham that has intensified its flavor and is just melting in your mouth. And that's what we got out of this. Uh, if you like to cook and like to experiment with things, I highly suggest trying to cure your own ham. Uh, you may have to go through some trouble to get an uncured piece, but it is so amazingly worth the wait. Um, I really do hope that you guys will go out and try this recipe. We're giving away a five piece cast iron lodge cookware set when we hit 1000 subscribers. All you have to do is like a video and subscribe to the channel to be entered in the giveaway.